Hey sports fans, Neil here at the Fix Yourself channel. Today we're going to replace the front brakes on a 2007 Lexus E350. Now, first thing about this car here is you can tell it's a woman's car just by that. There's the keys on that sucker, okay? Just for her comparison, here's here's my keys for my car, okay? So you got man's keys, woman's keys. Man's keys, woman's keys. I don't know why things are like this, but that's the way they are. Now, we got to do a brake job on this car. First, I'll do a visual inspection of the front rotors through the wheels. And, uh, geez, it doesn't look too bad on that side. And we'll look at the other side here. And on this side, at least from a visual inspection, it doesn't look bad at all. I don't really see any problem there. However, customer is complaining about the front brake so we will take a look at it now these kind of cars I guess you don't even use the keys to start them so let's see if I can figure this out I've never had to do anything like this before every car I've ever messed with has keys first I gotta get the seat back far enough so I can get in it no dogs Dog somewhere else. We can't have dogs in the way. Okay. Now, the way I understand it is once you have these keys just inside this car, all you gotta do is step on the brake pedal and press this button here. Ha! Huh, that worked pretty good. Gotta turn off the radio because YouTube doesn't like radios playing. And how would I go about doing that? I'd even be satisfied with turning it down. Let's see here. Here we go. Okay, that takes care of that. Got her in reverse, let's see how she drives. I guess I better put on my seat belt so we don't have to listen to that dinging. So when I come to a stop here, that's what I'll do. Just hang on here a second, sports fans. All right, I got my seat belt on so we're all nice and safe. Let's take this thing for a drive here. Get her up to speed and bring her to a stop. I don't know. If it was my car, I wouldn't be worried about it. Seems to be okay to me. We'll try her again here. I guess I actually have a pretty high tolerance for things being crappy. That's why uh, things that bother other people don't bother me as far as cars are concerned. I'm pretty much satisfied if they start and go down the road. Doesn't seem too bad. I see a little red triangle with an exclamation point on it. Um, I also see a low tire pressure indicator. So maybe I'll check the tire pressure on that. Maybe one thing will make the other thing go away. I really have no idea. But as far as the brakes are concerned, it wouldn't even cross my mind that there's a problem with them. So I don't know. Doesn't seem bad to me. I'm stopping straight with no hands on the wheel. I don't have any problem with this. <clears throat> but let's go back and tear it apart. Okay, I'm going to show you folks one thing too. When you're using someone else's car or borrowing someone else's car and it's newfangled, to me anything made after 2000 is newfangled, roll down your window. Okay, that way when you close the door, you aren't going to lock the keys in the car. I think the way this car is designed is it's virtually impossible to lock the keys in the car accidentally, but I don't want to find out. So I got the window open, so no matter what happens, I won't be locked out. Now the first thing I came across is I wondered, how the heck do you shut this thing off, you know? And uh, nothing on the key fob. However, that uh, button there, it says start, start and stop, and... Uh, 
I'm almost a little bit apprehensive about pushing it. It's almost, I almost feel like that would be akin to turning the key while the engine's running, but I don't think it's anything like that at all. I think pressing that button's going to stop this car. Let's just see. Ha! Look how nice that is. Okay, let's get to tearing this thing apart. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, as long as I have a air compressor and air hose here anyways, I'm going to see if any of those tires are low. I got that low pressure tire warning light in that uh, triangle with the explanation point uh, lit up on the dash. Now this car here has got nitrogen filled tires. And you can tell by the green valve cap. Okay, now fortunately for me is I have a special air compressor that provides a blend of 70% nitrogen. So we're not 100% nitrogen, but this will make 70% nitrogen and uh, special air compressor. So that ought to work really good for filling these nitrogen filled tires. All right, let's start by removing the wheel and we'll see what we can find out. All right, we got all the lug nuts removed and the wheel still doesn't want to come off. And in these days with aluminum wheel cars, this is pretty much normal. Now, it's not that big a deal in the shop. There's all kinds of things you can do. I, I always used to have somebody hold a block of wood here and then I'd whack it with a sledgehammer and that'd break it off pretty good. But uh, it takes two people. You gotta have one guy to hold a block of wood and one guy to uh, whack it with a sledgehammer. Plus, like I said, it's no big deal here in the shop. You can get it taken care of. But what if you were on the side of the road with a flat tire? You don't have a sledgehammer, you'd be all alone. What would you do? The ideal thing for removing a stuck wheel is something that's soft and heavy. And you have the ideal thing in your car right now, and that's the spare tire. I'm not going to use the spare tire, I'm going to use a different off wheel and tire just because it's handy. But you just take a wheel and tire and go like this. And that's all there is to it. It's almost the ideal thing. The rubber tire makes it so you're not going to damage the rim. And the weight of the tire and a wheel together makes it the ideal thing to break one of these aluminum wheels off free. And when we put this wheel back on, we're going to, before we do, we're going to clean up this surface area of this rotor and put a little anti-seize compound on there which should prevent this from happening again which would make a changing a tire on the side of the road in the event of a flat tire much much easier let's do a quick visual inspection and see how things look the rotor doesn't seem too bad it's a little scored up but not bad at all yep from what i can see here by just looking down through the caliper there the brake pads are thin, so they should be replaced. So that's what we're going to do. And the customer supplied us with rotors, so we're going to put new rotors on it as well. Okay, we're looking at the back side of the brake assembly here. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this caliper. And there's two bolts. There's one here, and then there's one there. Okay, so we'll remove this caliper. These are 14 millimeter bolts, and uh, you can take that size that I mentioned with a grain of salt because because over the course of the years as vehicles get repaired they'll be using quite often someone will put on aftermarket bolts uh, and they'll tend to be quite often uh, different size than the factory bolts so these are 14 millimeter your size may vary uh, Probably later on I'll secure this uh, caliper up with a bungee cord or a piece of wire so uh, it doesn't fall down and damage the hose. But we look at our brake pads and yes, they are quite thin. And now I'll have a chance to look at the back side of the rotor. And uh, actually things don't look too bad. The rotor doesn't really look that terrible, but uh, they're so cheap nowadays. Um, you might as well replace them if you have even the slightest uh, doubt about them, particularly if it's a decent car. 
If this is my car, my old beater Honda, I'd just go with the same rotors and put pads on it. But this is a fairly decent car, so we're going to fix it the right way. And uh, it's fairly easy to do. First thing is you take out these clips here. These things are pretty easy to lose. They're also pretty easy to forget to put back on. Okay? But, on the other hand, if either one of those things happened, it wouldn't be the end of the world. <laughs> Quite a few cars don't even have these deals on them. Uh, theoretically, is to aid in separating the brake pads when the brakes aren't applied, but holy cow. Um, if you ever try to push brake pads by yourself, uh, you know, you'll realize it takes quite a bit of force and these things don't provide much force. I think these things are actually just to make the car quieter and uh, perform a little better when it's brand new right off the showroom floor so people taking test drives don't complain. Um, but since they're there we will reinstall them. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, caliper mounting bolts and they're right there and right there. Um, size in this case is 17 millimeters so we'll take off the caliper mounting bolt now. Another thing we could do here before we take that off is we could take these pads out and actually just take a look at them. Let's take the pads off and see what we got going on there. Before we go any further, we'll take the brake pads off and inspect them. Um, this car's getting new rotors on it regardless, so it isn't any big deal. But if you were not using uh, new rotors, they would have uh, this would have been caught just in time before you started rotating the rotors. Um, which in the old days it was a real big deal. You want to make sure you're not to ruin your rotors, but now with the Chinese made parts, they're so darn cheap it doesn't matter. Um, you know, a lot of people just as a matter of course, they just automatically replace the rotors every time in a great job these days. Plus, it's so much easier to change your rotor nowadays than in the, in the old days the rotor and hub were all one, one piece and uh, the bearings were, you had to mess around with the removing the bearings to remove a brake rotor, but uh, that's no longer the case, so it's it's no big deal. So if you ever have the slightest bit of doubt and you have a decent car, I'd say just go ahead, in general, just go ahead and place the rotors when you do a brake jab. By the time you got done paying for somebody to have them machined, you'll end up spending just about the same amount of money as if you bought brand new ones. So, There's also some other benefits that, uh, of using new rotors that I'll show you in just a second here. At this point I'm going to secure this caliper up so it doesn't fall down and harm our hose. I'll just put a bungee cord around it and put it up on the spring on the strut there. Alright, I got my caliper hung by a bungee cord. I don't know whether you can see that, but I got a bungee cord holding that caliper to the uh, spring on the strut. Now that's not going to fall down and we don't have to worry about breaking that uh, brake line. Okay, so we got the caliper off, we got the caliper bracket off. Now we got to remove the rotor. And quite often, these will be difficult to remove. It'll be tight right around this area here where the rotor meets the hub. Now. Here's where we run into another advantage of just putting on new rotors. Uh, you can pretty much beat these off with impunity without having to worry about damaging anything. Um, if you were concerned about not damaging this rotor, if you're going to reuse it, they have uh, two bolt holes there. And I'm just guessing, I'm going only by memory, and I think it's 8mm with a 1.25 thread pitch. I'm just going by memory, so don't take my word for that, but that's quite easy to find uh, that information on the internet or any uh, type of service manual. So let's see if this rotor comes off. I'm going to see if I can get it off without damaging it because for whatever reason the customer might want to save it, keep it in the garage in case they ever trash a rotor, but let's just see if it comes off. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of penetrating oil on this, and if beating on it uh, does not make her come, 
come loose, we will do the thing where we put the metric screws in there. But I'd rather not spend any time looking for those screws, so I'm gonna just try the old school method of just beating the hell out of it first. If you're doing this, you may want to put your lug nuts back on so you don't accidentally hit uh, any of those lug studs. That's all the more I want to beat on that. So now I'm gonna find my metric screws and see if we can 